So today we have an epic triple base from another great suggestion from a viewer. 1792 12 year versus Knob Creek 12 year versus Evan Williams 12 year. Who will take this 12 year battle? What do you think? Honestly, it will be interesting to see how the 1792 12 year does. I haven't had that in a really long time. So come right back to the Mash and Drum. What's up folks, I'm Jason C and welcome back to the Mash and Drum. Like, subscribe and help me get to that 100,000 subscriber milestone for 2024. Appreciate the support. As always, if you have any suggestions for some head-to-head -head matchups, leave them below in the comments. As I mentioned before, YouTube is really looking for engagement in the comments section. So feed the algorithm if you can. Now before we dive in, let's hear from today's video sponsor. It is Zbiotics. Today's sponsor is back, it is Zbiotics, the world's first genetically engineered probiotic that I've been using and talking about for over a year. With all the great feedback from viewers, it has become the first drink of the night for a much better tomorrow. The weather is starting to warm up, soon enough we'll be at fairs, festivals, doing a lot of different stuff outdoors, probably be drinking some beers, maybe drinking some wine, and it'll be great to know that you're gonna have Zbiotics in your back pocket. It works so well, but how does it work so well? Zbiotics was developed by some very smart scientists who knew the real problem is not dehydration. It's actually a byproduct of alcohol that is most responsible for rough mornings after drinking. Zbiotics produces an enzyme like the one your liver uses to break down this byproduct. So anytime I know I'm gonna have a few drinks or head to a barrel selection, I think the NFL draft is coming up, so I'm definitely gonna need some Zbiotics right there with me along the way. Zbiotics makes it that much easier for me to wake up the next day, get to work, get to the gym, and bounce back faster than ever. This is real science that works, everyone. There's no random plant extracts, no off-the-shelf ingredients, and there is no sugar added. All you do is drink one of these about an hour before you start drinking, and that's it. You should still drink water, stay hydrated, and as always, if you can, get a good night's sleep. But Zbiotics will make it a lot easier for you to get out of bed or get off the couch anytime you know you're gonna have a few drinks the night or the day before. All right, so I've been talking it up enough. It's time for you to try it. Here's how. Go to zbiotics.com slash mash and drum or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use mash and drum at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter what time or occasion. Zbiotics is back with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. So remember, head to zbiotics.com slash mash and drum and use the code mash and drum at checkout for 15% off. Thank you Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode and thanks to you for making the sponsors happen. Cheers. 1792 Small Batch is Barton's flagship bourbon, having undergone naming changes over the years from 1792 Ridgewood Reserve to 1792 Ridgemont Reserve, and then finally to 1792 Small Batch. Now in July 2019, 1792's 12-year age statement returned and was promised to be released each and every summer. Now this one is bottled at 96.6 proof and has an undisclosed mash bill with an MSRP around 50 bucks. Evan Williams 12 year 101 proof bourbon used to be an export only bourbon that was sold exclusively in Japan, but since the opening of the Evan Williams experience in downtown Louisville in 2013, consumers have been able to purchase Evan Williams 12 year 101 at the distillery. Now, the bourbon has remained a distillery exclusive in the US while still being exported in Japan. This is distilled by Heaven Hill, it's bottled at 101 proof with an MSRP of 130 bucks. Next, we have Knob Creek 12 Year, which was originally launched as a limited edition bourbon when it was released in late 2019. Since that initial release, Knob Creek 12 Year now joins Knob Creek 9 Year, small batch and single barrel, as part of the standard Knob Creek small batch lineup. It's bottled at 100 proof with a mash bill of 77% corn, 13% rye, and 10% malted barley, and it retails for about 60 bucks. So while I mix these up, if this is your first time watching a double base or triple base episode, essentially what I do is I nose them, taste them, and I just give the best nose, the best taste, and the best finish to one of the glasses. The ones with the most points wins the matchup. All right, let's start off with the nose. Here we go. Mm, beautiful oak note here. I would imagine we're gonna get some nice sweet oak on all three of these. This also has a bright fruit forward note, like a strawberry. I'm actually getting like a strawberry bubblegum note. That's kind of nice. All right, let's go to the second one here. Wow, this one is darker. You feel like, you know, you're walking into a Rick house a little bit. 
We got all that beautiful oak. Some dark fruit here too. Oh, I like this nose. I don't know, this one just has more of a, of a light and dark balance that, and the, the flavors just seem deeper on the nose. All right, last one. So a little more oak here, but this is getting into more baking spices. So three very different noses. You have a lot of sweet. This is kind of a dark fruit, dark oak. And then this one is, you have the dark oak, but there's more baking spice here. I don't know, as far as nose goes, oh, man. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give the nod to, uh, to B. So B is gonna get the one point for the nose. Let's go to palate, here we go. That immediately hit my palate with just some straight up deliciousness right there. Not very detailed, just straight up deliciousness. Like as soon as it hit the front of my palate, it just explodes with flavor. That is really, really nice. This one might have been my second place uh, nose if I had to give a nose a second place, but love the palate on this one. So second sip, I feel like the oak takes a little bit more of a back seat and it gets a little bit more of, um, of an ethanol kick on it. Getting like a bright powdered sugar note. It's, it's very sweet at the same time of trying to balance some oak out, but I really feel like the sweet is really taking over on that one. All right, letter B, here we go. You know, on this one, the nose matches the palate. The palate has a deeper, richer oak profile, not as sweet as A. It's a little bit more into kind of like borderline leather tobacco type notes that you get on older age bourbons. I feel like I'm getting a little chocolate here too. One more sip of B. That's fantastic. It's dark, it's rich. It's not giving me that like powdered sugary like aftertaste I was getting with A. I think B so far, I don't know. B so far is doing pretty well. I'm not sure what B is, but. It's so interesting to me, I always tell everybody that like the lineup that you utilize in a blind flight absolutely affects the entire flight. You may think you know what you're tasting, but when you start lining up different bourbons and ryes or American whiskeys in, in a flight, the one that precedes it, the one that goes after that whiskey, and the one after that, they all sort of affect each other. All right, last one here. Wow, what was that flavor I just got? Was that like toasted coconut? The hell was that? I don't think it's a toasted coconut, but there is definitely like a sugary, almost almondy type note. Again, the baking spices are really heavy in this one. So maybe it's just more of like a cinnamon clove type thing I'm picking up. It's interesting, this one seems to be the most tame coming off these two. I feel like these two are really kind of punches in the face. This one, I feel like has some really nice balance, but I don't think it's standing up to number two here. Yeah, number two is pretty dark and delicious. Really like that one. Let's go to number one. Number one has this is gonna sound crazy, but do you guys know what like those Italian rainbow cookies are with like the three different colors in the middle? I'll put a picture here to show you. So it's like three different color like cakes with jelly in the middle and some chocolate around it. And they're pretty damn delicious. The flavor I'm getting on this is reminding me of a rainbow cookie. And it's, it's bizarre. I don't know where that's coming from. I love blind taste. See, this is what happens. Start picking up crazy flavors. Yeah, it's giving me like almond extract vibes, which you use a lot of, well, at least my grandmother did uh, in, you know, rainbow cookies. That's crazy. Let me go to B here again. Yeah, I think I have to give it to B still. Even though this is like throwing, taking me back to, to my grandma's cookies, B is just overall a better experience overall. So I think B is gonna take it. Um, I think actually A might have the finish over B, but that would only give it one point where I think B has, it's got the, the nose and the pal for me. So let's find out what went out. Last place, uh, you know, glass C here didn't get any points. Let's see what we got here. That's surprising. Cause I actually thought this one was going to win it all. And this is the Evan Williams 12 year. 
The Evan Williams 12 year uh, is, I love this bourbon so much, but against these other two, it was just kind of falling a little bit flat against the other two. Still an absolute delicious bourbon, but what's crazy about this one is that it's 130 bucks versus these other two, which are less than half the price. So let's move this one on over. Now let's find out what my uh, grandma's cookie, uh, rainbow cookies recipe was. Really? My grandma's rainbow cookies is the 1792 aged 12 years, which means Knob Creek 12 year, man. Even with all this air out of the bottle, all this oxidation, it still just kicks ass. I don't know. Knob Creek 12 year is one of the best values on the planet. It is so damn good. This 1792 though, I'm gonna have to sip this more because that flavor I was getting has completely like brought me back to like a nostalgic place, which is kind of a cool thing when that happens with either food or you know your whiskey, it kind of just brings back nostalgic flavor. So man, Knob Creek 12 year takes it again. Another fantastic recommendation and suggestion from a viewer. Thank you guys so much. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this triple base episode here on the Mastodon Drone with 1792 12 year versus Knob Creek 12 year versus Evan William 12 year. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram. Again, let me know down in the comments any future suggestions you guys might have, just like this one. And uh, before I go, I'm going to blend these. We're going to call this blend Evan 1792 Knobs. And that's going to be the name of this blend Evan's 1792 Knobs. On the nose, it, it's actually pretty delicious. Uh, let's see what we get on the pal here. That's the true test. That might be, hold on a second. That actually works. That's really nice. It's, it's got the, it's got the finish of the 1792, the kind of like that dark, rich flavor from the Knob Creek 12 year. And it's got the baking spice from the Evan Williams. It's kind of a nice, combination of all three damn evan 1792 knobs if you have all three of these you should try the blend just do some equal parts i'm sure it needs to be tweaked a little bit but that's really good that might be my favorite blend i've done in a while so uh with that said as i always say it's not about the whiskey it's the people you share with cheers i'll see you next time right here on the master and drum cheers folks